Introducing the self-centering Cradle Capo, Diderio's first with a latch top design. It's made to always be ready for a perfect, in-tune performance. Right on, man. That sounded great. Hey, what's up, guys? This is uh, Perry with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Ryman Auditorium. Hanging out with Billy Strings. Virtuoso, all around badass player. So excited that we could do this, man. Thanks, um, man. Me too. This is so cool, man. I'm, I'm excited for the show tonight. Uh, a good buddy of mine um, came home the other day uh, from, from work and came over and said, Dude, uh, I know how much you love metal and I know how much you love bluegrass. You got to hear this guy. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. And then we looked it up and you were, you were playing the show. So I'm so excited that we got the chance to do this. Yeah, man. Um, man, uh, not a lot of uh, bluegrass guys are going to see with a ton of pedals, which we will get to in a second. But we should start with this custom right here. This. Uh, yeah, this um, is... I got this about two years ago and it was built by uh, Preston Thompson Guitars out in Sisters, Oregon. Uh, they're a small company based in Sisters and uh, they make fantastic instruments. It's beautiful. Um, I can show you the back of it there. It's oh. Brazilian rosewood. And uh, was this a nice addition from BNA or something like that? Is that what the tape is, or just to protect uh, the back from no, the belt? It's actually the tape is holding on this little microphone here, uh -huh. which is an Audio Technica 350, and I sort of uh, I blend that in with my DI signal. There's a K and K pickup. Oh, well, my lavaliers down here. There's a uh, a K and K pickup here, which I blend with this microphone. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, that's what all the tapes for. Is this is like a transducer style, like a uh, like a yeah. Piezo? There's there's three little transducers underneath there. I think, kind of just glued to the bridge plate. But uh, yeah, this guitar is fantastic. Like I said, I've had it for a couple years, and this is the main guitar that I use on stage um, all the time. It's awesome. What is it about this? particular guitar or brand that you, that, you know, I mean, there's a million old guitars in the world. I've seen you with old Martins and stuff yeah. like that. Um, yeah, I have a, a 1948 D28 that I really like as well right. that I bought from Brian Sutton. Um, but this one works on stage. The pickup sounds good. Um, some guitars, even if they're, let's say it's a great sounding acoustic guitar, it might not be the best with a pickup. pickup. Yeah, it's hard to get an acoustic to sound like an acoustic in a room a lot of right. times. You know? So this guitar, I think, when I plugged it in, I was just like, man, a pickup doesn't really sound that bad. Or at least I've gotten used to it. Um, so whenever I plug in a different guitar, I man, I have to EQ it all. And oh, this sounds That's weird because of the pickup. It sounds such like a pickup. But this guitar, whenever I plug it in, it just sounds uh, like a guitar. and it, it, Just louder. Yeah, yeah. It, just, it works for me. Love that. And I, and, the neck, just the way it feels, you know. Uh, the way it feels when I'm when I'm on stage is just like this is home, totally. You know, and I'm comfortable I, yeah. here. It's Love crazy that. if I pick up a different guitar. Like um, since this is Brazilian, you know, if we travel international, like I will bring my mahogany guitar. Just so you don't have any kind of. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, and then uh, it's just crazy how much different it sounds in the headphones. And I'm all, all right. about consistency. You know, I'm all about like, like I said, I, I'm almost OCD about consistency. Like, I like things to sound like as close to they can as the gig before, you know? Totally get like, that. Or in feel too, so when I get used to a guitar neck, I I really get tied to one for a while. Um, that doesn't mean I don't play my other guitars at home, but I would feel a little foreign with anything other than this guitar at this moment on stage. If I was gonna change guitars, change like my main guitar it would take me a while yeah. to get used to it i totally understand that. Yeah. yeah for sure so what strings and gauges are you running on this bad boy uh diadario exp phosphor bronze mediums they're 13 through 56. Mm. yeah medium gauge it's good for the bluegrass you know because i i play so hard right. speaking of playing hard um that action is sitting there pretty high is it yeah well i don't know from, yeah. from this angle it looks pretty i don't know up there. my but, guy uh my luthier in, here in town, his name's Dave Johnson, mm -hmm. and he makes uh, scale, scale model, model guitars. Yeah, yeah that scale guy's model great. guitars. Yeah. So he's he's my guy that sets it up. And yeah, I guess I like it a little high. And I think again because I play with such a hard right hand that you know if you hit it much harder, if your action's 
any you're gonna buzz out it'll yeah, buzz it'll out, out. Yeah. yeah so i think i do sort of have kind of high action because of that i wish i could learn to play lighter honestly but really? i just it's well there's so much i mean especially for blue, bluegrass if you're looking for that barky tone you kind of really got to hit the hell of it it's yeah, a percussive just, thing as well as a i've always kind of di- dug in and <laughs> and uh, it's like one of the things that i'm learning as i grow and as i you know t- technique you know and playing lighter and playing easier and kind of getting more into a zen space than just like smashing out of it yeah. yeah i know i know you're like super into you know old obviously traditional bluegrass doc watson and all that stuff but are there any players um around today that you are you know currently like picking up on, uh from maybe technique wise or otherwise um sometimes i watch like youtube videos of uh julian lodge yeah. workshops totally um and he's one of them you know and there's a lot of different players you know I also I listen to a lot of electric players too, Marcus King and you sure. know Derek Trucks and folks like that. Yeah, I love your videos with Marcus. Those are too cool. Over yeah, Carter, that's great. Yeah, that's really cool. He'll be here tonight. And Derek is great, man. He is just such a talent. Yeah. Well, um, I guess that kind of covers this awesome guitar. Um, yeah, this thing, man. Does I, it scare you traveling with one? Um, you know what? Not since I switched over to Diadario strings. Really? Okay. Good because, plug. Good plug. <laughs> Because I used to break my elixirs every gig I'd break the G-string, right there on the saddle. Uh-huh. Every gig, and I had to bring two or three guitars. I had this stand right here, it's got three hooks on it. They used to be filled up. Not I've anymore. been traveling with just this guitar, and I don't break strings anymore, man. They're they, just not breaking they at just, all. They just, I haven't been breaking them, you know? Nope. And uh, it's, it's amazing, and they just, they sound amazing, and they don't break, they're so, you know, I used to think, geez, I just play so hard that I break. I have to break strings every gig, and I don't have a guitar tech, you know. When I break a string, I'm sitting here changing a string on stage in front of everybody, and it's, to me, that's like sort of like, I wish I could be doing a show right now. Right, you know, that would be nerve-wracking for me. <laughs> well, it's like frustrating for me. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're in the middle of a song, and then you break a string, and then your whole guitar goes out of tune, and it's just right. like, gosh. It's a nightmare. And of course, you know, that's when I would just grab a different guitar. And I used to, um, you know, like I said, I would bring my Mahogany Thompson, and I also used to have a Roy Noble guitar that I would bring. Um, but lately, since I haven't been breaking strings, it's been okay to just bring one. Yeah, that's it's, crazy. Yeah. Man, you must have some confidence in the strings. That's I do, <laughs> yeah. I do. I love them, man. Speaking of tone woods, I'm guessing this is a, a spruce top? Yeah, Adirondack mm-hmm. spruce and Brazilian rosewood back and sides. So beautiful. It's just a beautiful... I love that cool little volute, super traditional. Like, yeah. yeah. It's great. And um, this guitar was sort of, you know, designed by me, like the herringbone. Did you specify what exactly what yeah, you wanted? Yeah, you know, ebony fretboard. And my dad's guitar, when I was growing up, always had this white binding around the headstock and the neck. So for some reason, I've always been turned on by that because that's what dad's guitar had. Right, right. You know, it's like, I find it's a lot easier to see your, your fret markers, too. Yeah. You have a binding. Um, but I love this sunburst. And uh, also, I, you know, it's, it's basically a, an HD 28, but I put a D18 style rosette. Mm-hmm. Like, I like the small one. Super simple and little one, yeah. 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 And uh, it works great in an acoustic setting. It works great in the studio. It works great on stage. This is like, man, I think I'll, I don't know. You can never say, but I'm pretty tied down to this guitar. Like, I love it, you know? Love that. I'm, I'm certainly never going to get rid of it, but this, this very well could be my axe, you know, my main one forever, you know? But, I get that. But who knows what will come along. You know, Thompson's building me a... Um, a Madagascar Rosewood Orchestra model. Oh, cool. And that's just going to mostly be for sitting around and playing, writing and stuff, but who knows? I might play that on stage at some point. Right on. But I guess we're going to dive into this pedal board here because um, this is not something you traditionally see a bluegrass guy with, you know, a freeze or, <laughs> you, know, you know, a nemesis <laughs> delay or whatever. So I'm guessing everything's running into your switcher here. Yeah. Um, which saves you from tap dancing all night. Yeah. Um, which must be nice, especially for, like, uh, the Chase Bliss pedals where there's so many knobs and switches and stuff that you could accidentally hit with your foot. I bet running into a switcher is probably the, yeah, the safe it, bet there. It's, huh? It really helps with that so you don't kind of bump into stuff. And also I think it's just cool because, uh, you know, when nothing's being used, the signal's just off. It's just my DI, you know. It's, uh-huh. it's not like my signal's still running through all these pedals that are inactive. Gotcha. It's like... It's just the DI, which is, that's what I use most of the time, is just the... Just straight DI, yeah. But then once we get into a psychedelic territory kind of jam, 
I might click on the reverb or, you know, I might use the phaser. If we're getting real weird, that's when I start going for the pitchfork and stuff like that. Um, I love the Nemesis delay uh, by Source Audio. That thing's just got, it's, there's so many options. It's just jam I love yeah. these pedals, you know, like this one where it ha it's a delay pedal, but then you have, you know, 10 different delays on it. It's really cool. The same thing with the Eventide. I mean, that thing is just a, a workstation. It really is. Especially, it, I mean, I love the favorite switch. That Barn, th Barn 3 is cool for that, man. Those, those are great. Yeah. You can program those to do different things, too, like recall or uh, like certain. Yeah, it could even be like a mid, like a, you know, we don't, like a momentary oh, really? switch. Yeah, 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 like a um, phase shift. Or but something for like you that. folks that are checking this out anyways, what, what the Barn 3 does is it just helps me switch through the settings on the Eventide H9. And I can go up and down, you know, there's 99 sounds on this thing and I can go up and down through all of them. Um, so that's really cool. Um, yeah, the Eventide stuff is crazy. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, they, they, they now make like, I think it's a rack mountable. It's called the H9000, but it's like 36 of those DSPs in one unit. Oh my god. So gosh. I got to do a demo of it. It's on YouTube, you guys can find it, but it just sounds like weird whale noises in, in like a soundtrack or something like that. It's, oh, that's it's awesome. crazy. But yeah, those things, there's probably more processing power in, them, in that than what's on the freaking shuttle to yeah. the moon. You know? To be honest, like I haven't even scratched the surface totally. with the H9. Um, I would say that the thing that I really love and you probably use the most during our crazy psychedelic parts of the show is the womb tone, uh, Chase Bliss womb tone. And my favorite thing to do with that. Yeah, let's hear it. Is uh, I like to use the expression on the rate. Uh -huh. So you can, you, know, you got a nice wide one there. You can also. A lot of times, so cool. a lot of times, what I'll do is like if we're in a big part of a jam where it's like really heavy and we're getting ready to like bust into another song, I'll just slowly use the phaser. And then just kind of like go into the next part. Just build but up, it, yeah. Yeah, it's almost like wow, 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 wow. <laughs> you know, it kind of just starts to get crazy. But uh, love that. I love it too. I love using the expression pedals um, on the, the Chase Bliss stuff. They have so, so many options on the back for if, the expression. If, if I'm not mistaken, almost all the Chase Bliss pedals, if not all of them, those dip switches are so that you can literally set an expression to all of the different parameters, right? Anything you want to do. So uh. I, I just use it for the rate, but you could also do it for the volume or the mix or the, you know, the depth or the feed or anything. Joel's a mad scientist over there. Yeah, yeah, they're amazing. And, uh, a fun thing I used to do with the brothers, I don't do it anymore because I just use this amp for distortion. Um, but you can sort of do the same thing on the brothers where you put the expression for the, uh, like the, the gain on one of the, one of the, uh, Dip switches? Yeah, and so it's almost like you'd be clean and then you can actually put in a little bit of distortion or it's like, oh. you're, it's almost like you just turn this expression pedal into the gain knob. That's so and cool. you can just turn up the gain. Having that control at your feet is awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, so I love that stuff. And then the other expression pedal that I have here is used for the pitchfork. Gotcha. Which a lot so of times- So what parameter is it controlling on the pitchfork then? Um, it's just, uh, it, it controls like the, uh, the octave, I think, you know, you could go from like a low octave all the way up. Okay, gotcha. So all the way down is basically off. And then a little bit up, you can. I, st I start using that for some pretty wacky That's stuff. That's out there, know? man. Yeah, yeah. That's way cool. Um, another fun thing I really like to do sometimes is with the freeze pedal, um, I have a pog underneath. And so that's just like this octave. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll hit that freeze on and I'll hit that low note. And then I'll just get that sucker droning. For in between songs and stuff. Yeah, before a song, for an intro. You can kind of play stuff over it. 
just kind of creates this little weird atmosphere. And then, you know, when we'd kick into the song, I'd probably, you know, sometimes I leave it on for a little bit. Um, I love those things. They're but yeah, so I fun. can do that in the middle of a jam. You know, if we're in a in a song and then it sort of settles down into a jam, I can just go. You know, put a a low mm. octave, basically almost like somebody's playing yeah. the, like, it's like a, a synth pad or yeah. like an ebo or something. Yeah. And it just keeps on droning, man. Love that. It's really cool. Cool. So we got two expressions, and then is the Dunlop just a volume? Yeah, the Dunlop. So what's going on here is, and that's for my distortion, which is the Chase Bliss Brothers and it goes into a uh, deluxe reverb and I just have a quarter inch out coming out of um, out of this I should tell you my Grace DI has been modded oh. uh, I, I had them make so I have a, a input and there's a DI out there's, all, there's also a quarter inch out on the Grace uh, Grace Designs Bix to DI to send your guitar signal to your amp? well that's what I use it for um, Usually what would happen if I had, um, if I pressed this mute button, it would mute this quarter inch out as well. I had Grace make this one special so it bypasses the mute so that it's for my tuner. Aha. Uh -huh. So whenever I'm muted, uh, my tuner's still on. Smart. So this quarter inch just goes to the tuner and then I come out of the tuner into this volume pedal and it goes out of the volume pedal into a brother's uh, gain stage and then I have an EQ and then that goes into the Fender amp so you have the ability to kind of like I was saying you could have clean and then you could put a little, a, a, a little, a little bit of distortion yeah. and you could ramp it up and then you know all the way down so is so rad it sounds sandy. like a train coming yeah so like you know It's a lot of dynamics for an yeah. acoustic guitar. Yeah, and it's really, it's really fun, you know, when you're in, like, like I said, we do a lot of stuff that's just, we don't know what the heck's gonna happen at any point in time. So just to have all these sort of tools, different to yeah, paint with. different yeah. colors to paint with, different tools at your disposal to, you know, do whatever with. And that's why, you know, I don't know, I get a lot of guff from, like, the, the old bluegrass purists that just think this is, of blasphemous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But eh, whatever, you know. Ah, I, no I'm way. having fun. <laughs> Innovation's cool, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. Re it's really fun, man. I really uh, I appreciate the, the juxtaposition of something old and, um, you know, uh, maybe traditional against, like, you know, something like you're, you take this very, very uh, 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 established sound, and then with your lyrics and your playing, it just makes it its, own, its own thing, and I love that, man. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, that's I, why I'm a big fan. I you grew know? up playing bluegrass, but. Um, you know, it's 2019, and so when I'm writing songs and stuff, I'm not, I can't write like it's 1946, you know, because right. I grew, I was born in 92. Right, know? right, right, right. Um, but it is, it is cool. Uh, like, I really associate, like, music, like, a lot of my tattoo friends are, <laughs> we, we talk about the correlation between, like, traditional tattoos and traditional music, and it's kind of, there's the same thing there, you know, there's... Absolutely, yeah, yeah, I would agree, 100%. It's when, paying reverence to... To something, yeah, but you know, still but innovating and doing your totally. own thing. Yeah, and uh, people always get a little scared or touchy when you start changing something. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But change is inevitable, and change can be really good, man. That's what moves things forward, you know. Sure does, <laughs> Billy. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time to run us through your uh, life setup here, man. I appreciate it. Man, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, I'm great to meet you too. Super looking forward to the show tonight. And uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, stay tuned for other rig rundowns, riff rundowns, lessons, all that fun stuff. See you soon.